<laughs> Hi guys. Welcome to the Tuesday Night Sizzle. Um, I have some very exciting news tonight that I'm sure you guys are all going to fall off your seats to be so excited. But for the next six sizzles, you get me as your host. So congratulations. You're the winner. Um, so I'm going to be giving away some fun things like puzzles. So make sure to tune in. So tonight, I asked Courtney Owens if she would speak to us about self-care. Um, I follow, I don't even know if you know this, Courtney, but I follow your blog. Well, you have exciting. a blog. Yes, and I read your blog. So um, I love what you have to say, and I'm excited for you to talk to us about how to care for ourselves to build doTERRA business. Well, thanks. So you should all know, I when Kenzie um, sent me a message yesterday, and my, my good friend Amanda Whitman told me I should lead off with this. So I felt like she was probably accurate. I need you to know that I am not the queen of self-care because I'm still a mom, and I have seven kids. So I, I did say seven. The word seven came out of my mouth. That did happen. Um, this is my husband, Michael, by the way. <laughs> Um, so we have seven. We, our oldest is 13 and our youngest is two and a half. And over the course of 13 years, I've had to figure out how this self-care thing works. And four and a half years ago when we started a business, I really had to figure out how the self-care thing works because I was kind of falling apart. Um, but we all still have like mom days. So I want to be super real with you there that like the very day, the very Monday that the amazing Kenzie sent me that message, I may not have eaten lunch that day and I might have finished off my toddler's chicken nuggets. So, you know, we have those days too. <laughs> so I'm going to give you some really good tips um, and some things that kind of I've learned and I'm probably going to present it in kind of a mom way because that's how I roll. But, you know, it never hurts to hear it from mom. So I'm going to share my screen. Hang on. All right. PowerPoints are my jam, and they help me to not get lost and ramble and tell you stories. I could tell you stories all day. So here we go. All right, so we're going to talk about the top self-care habits for building a doTERRA business. And when I say top, like, I could go all crazy on you guys tonight and give you 1 million self-care ideas. So I'm going to like hit the basics and get talk through them a little bit. And then if you want to know more, we can always talk more, you know, another time, but I don't, you know, I could talk to you till midnight tonight about self-care because I could. All right. So we're going to talk about the four areas, um, four of the areas tonight where we want to focus on self-care. For our body, our mind, our spirit, and our emotions. Okay, I feel like these are the main four. Um, I feel like you get these four under control and you can begin to move out into other areas like social self-care <laughs> and cutting toxic people from your life and things like that. You don't wanna go into that before you have a healthy body, mind, spirit, emotions, cause you'll just do all kinds of crazy things, right? So we're gonna start, it's kind of like when we talk about supplements and oils, we talk about that beautiful pyramid of health and wellness, and we talk about that foundation of LLV, right? So we're gonna talk about foundational stuff and build our way up here. Okay, so the first part, and I want to really, um, my whole goal before I even go into the body is you can't pour from an empty cup. It's, it's impossible. So we're in a business of pouring out. Like that's what we do every single day. In particular, those of us in this group, we are leading other people. All I do all day long is pour, 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 right? So if I'm not putting stuff into me, it's like personal development or anything else. If I'm not putting that good stuff into me, I have nothing left to give at some point. And I even got to a point in my own physical body this past spring. We were in the middle of Diamond Club. We quit Diamond Club after two months. After, two months. So after the second month, we, it was our second time doing it. Our first time doing it, we just like 
pushed right through. I had a baby that was traveling with me. Like we just nailed it. And it was awesome. We were in the top 50. We solidified silver. We were like baby, baby silvers when we did it. This time we did it. We're going in as, were we platinum yet? We were platinum. We had hit platinum in November and we were like, let's do this. We're going to hit diamond. We're going to like blow everybody away. And I got two months in and my physical body was like yelling at me, right? Screaming at me. <laughs> I mean, all the red flags were flying, <laughs> all the white flags, surrender, surrender. So um, I had to push on the brakes and really take a step back and say, what is going on in my body? Because if I'm getting all of the mind, spirit, emotion red flags, I know where that starts out. I know that there's something going on inside of me. Um, and sure enough, we did some blood work and I had all kinds of, believe it or not, after you do babies and breastfeeding for 13 years straight, you maybe have some hormone stuff to get it <laughs> under control. Maybe. So luckily our awesome doTERRA upline is also our functional medicine doctor. And so we've done a lot of self-care. Like that has been the name of the game for me for months now, six months. <laughs> so I'm telling you, I'm coming at this from a place of, Hey, I'm, I've just walked through this and we, I cannot pour from an empty cup. So I had to replenish physically, emotionally, all of the ways. So, all right, let's talk about body. So the first question we're going to ask when we're approaching physical self-care is what are you putting in your body? Now, this is the one that we're all probably pros at, right? Because we teach people how to be healthy. Well, believe it or not, <laughs> I have found that that's not always the case. That sometimes those of us teaching others what to put in their body are the worst at what we put in our bodies. I'm telling you, when I chat with my builders about this, all of this, like this is something across the board that is a problem because we're so focused on the pouring out, right? That we're not actually nourishing our own selves. Now, if you are like me, like, so I am not, I am not a cook. <laughs> I am not, I, it's not wise. Okay. So for me, we've actually, we've actually acknowledged that if I did not have Michael, I would be like hugely overweight and I'd never like, it would just be really bad because, and I'd be probably completely poor because I just eat out all the time. <laughs> I just, I don't do a real good job at preparing meals. Right. So I have had to compensate and find ways to find healthy things that I can eat when I am not with him. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, really, re I've had to tell him, listen, you are my support. And he's amazing, right? You're awesome. Um, he's my support team here at our house. Like we are a team and I, if I'm not going to be <laughs> making myself healthy meals, we've had, we've like had to have this conversation like, okay, I need you to help me. What can I do? What can you help me do ahead of time? so that things are prepped, so that there are things that I can grab real quick that I won't burn, that I won't set the house on fire while you're at work, like what can we do? And so we've had to have that conversation because for so many years, mommy's eating leftover chicken nuggets and string cheese all day long. Like that was kind of it, that was pretty much my diet until he'd come home from work and make dinner. And so it takes planning, it takes being proactive. And I think it's exactly what we tell other people. Even, even if you can cook. Yes. Even, you still have to plan and be proactive. Yeah. yeah. You still have to early on say, okay, I am not going to go get this craft food later this week. I'm not going to eat at McDonald's. I'm not going to, I'm going to have this plan so that when I'm out and I'm busy and I'm going class to class to class this weekend, I have a plan, right? Because what goes in our body is hugely important. It's that foundation. Now, the other thing that goes into this is <laughs> drinking enough water, which I, and again, a huge thing for so many of us. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're pouring out, we're pouring out, we're pouring out, and we're just replenishing with coffee 
or caffeine or whatever. And then we get to the end of the day and we're like, why do I have a headache? I must be so tired. And really we just are dehydrated and we need to replenish. Our bodies need that. So it's exactly what we tell other people, right? You need to put the right things in your body. You need to take your supplements. And then how many of us are not taking our supplements? <laughs> How many of us like take the first dose and forget at three, four o'clock that we should probably have taken the second dose of our LLV? It happens. But that foundation is just as important for us as it is for our customers. Okay, guys? So that's the first part. What are you doing with your body? Um, I am I'm on a new journey these days. <laughs> My former journey was I'm pregnant <laughs> and then I'm going to have a baby and then I'm going to breastfeed that baby like every hour and a half to two hours and what workout I just chased a two-year-old and breastfed a baby all day. You know what I mean? So that was a different season for me and now I'm in a new season and I had to evaluate what it was time to do with my body, right? I'm not just going to let it sit and get tired and overweight and sick and all the things, right? It was time to get moving again. <laughs> and I used to be a super athletic, active. I'm always active, guys. I'm always active. I have seven kids that I'm chasing after all the time. But a very, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just very strategically planning it out. Intentional. That was the word. Intentional movement, intentional exercise. So for you, it does not have to be going to the gym, guys. It does not have to be, oh, I'm going to wake up at the crack of dawn and I'm going to get there. Trust me, I've tried that and it doesn't really go super well for me. Um, I've had to adjust. I was doing, I was doing this whole different thing. Summer was different and now the kids are in school. And so you're just, at least for me, like it's always moving and it's always changing and I have to adjust to what the season is, right? And so like this season for me right now is I'm, I'm running several times a week and I am doing yoga. I'm doing lots of yoga. <laughs> yoga is my friend right now. Um, you know, so what, find what works for you. It might just be going for a walk. It might just be getting outdoors. It might just be stretching. It might just be do something. Just do something with this amazing body that God gave you. That's kind of my my two cents on that. Um, and then also under the body category is our rest and sleep. So I am a. I think we can say high energy, <laughs> um, high achieving. Uh, if you're familiar with um, the like Enneagram, the Energizer Bunny. Um, yeah, I'm like a little Energizer Just Bunny. Going Just keep going, going and going and going and going and going. Um, I am an Enneagram three. If that, Which if you all roll with that, is the real reason why she doesn't stop to eat. Like, yes, because I don't. She stop. could stop and she could fix herself. Anything yeah. that I do for her, totally. But she struggles with the pause. Yeah. So. Sometimes you have to be intentional yeah. about so, that pause because if you just go, go, yes. go, go, go. Yes. And that's, a, that's I think, a mom thing, yeah. a big mom thing because it's like, well, I have one million things I need to do today. Yeah. Why in the world would I sit down? <laughs> Why would I sit down? Because if I sit, I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't sit. Don't stop because it might all fall apart the second you stop moving. So rest in particular, while we are growing a business and we're having to pour out on other people, rest does not have to always be taking a nap, right? Rest can be sitting. Or can be. It can be, yeah. But I'm just saying there are many different ways to rest. There are ways to wind down. There are ways to, for your body to recover from busyness, from your physical exercise that you're going to add in there, from all the things that you're doing, from your brain just constantly going, right? We have to recover. We have to give our bodies rest. And so rest might be a nap for you. You know, I, I am a big fan of like a 15, 20 minute nap. Like 
hey, if you can get that in there, go for it. My problem is it's usually not 15 to 20 minutes and I have preschoolers running around my house. Not a good plan. <laughs> um, so if you can pull that off, hey, I, I applaud you. Um, rest for me might look like I'm going to sit down and I'm going to listen to a podcast. Uh, rest might look like reading a book. Rest okay. might, for me, I like to drive. That is restful for me. When I am feeling overwhelmed and stressed and anxious, Michael will just hand me the keys. <laughs> And I'll just go drive. I mean, it's not like we live in the country or anything. We're in the middle of like a suburb, a really busy main road. And I'll just drive down Highway K, guys. I don't mind. I just, I need to go sometimes and just sit and the white noise of the road and just drive. Um, it looks different for everyone. Whatever rest looks like for you, find what rest looks like for you because it's important. It's also important to wind down at night to get a good, full, restful night's sleep. Um, I will tell you, I don't know if you guys have tried one Serenity soft gel with one Copaiba soft gel, but it is like magic for sleep. Even when my three, almost three-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old comes and climbs in bed with me in the middle of the night, I'm still getting good sleep. I'm a little sore in the morning because my arms up here or something, but it, I mean, I'm getting good rest, which is huge. Um, you know, my diffuser's running, and I'm t those two, though, are just like, I was doing two Serenity, but the, the one of each, man, Copaiba's my BFF. We just like each other a lot. All right, let's talk about the mind. So a lot of times you can see these red flags, right, that you're maybe not handling that mindful brain self-care real well by your stress response. Um, that was actually a number one red flag for me with my hormones being out of whack is because I could tell I was not reacting, like I was reacting to everything. Everything was a trigger. Uh, every, every bit of stress had me like <sighs> puffing oils in my hands and like <laughs> it was just out of control and I could feel that out of controlness, right? So um, the thing with stress is that it always leads towards dis-ease, right? I'm saying dis-ease, disease. Stress leads to all of the yucky things that we don't want, right? It leads to poor mental health, obviously. It leads to more depression, more anxiety. It's leading to even things within our bodies like, oh, it's, yeah, it's increasing your cortisol levels, of course, but things like cardiovascular disease and heart disease and more likely to have a heart attack, more likely to have a stroke when you're living in high places of stress. Now, this is coming from, again, a mom of seven kids under, you know, 13 and under running my own business. I actually was running two businesses until just a couple months ago when I retired as a doula. Like, I know stress, guys, trust me. And getting that under control is such a big piece. Hey, guess what we have though? We have these things called essential oils and they help with stress. Do you ever like get a couple hours into your day and you're like, man, what's my problem? And oh wait, I have a whole cabinet of oils. I don't know what my problem is. I shouldn't have a problem right now. <laughs> use your oils. Use your oils. Um, so many good oils to use for calming, grounding. Guys, if I, my kids don't see the steady blend, just so you know. That is all mine. And I am like <laughs> rolling that baby on night and day. That steady blend is my friend. Um, and I love balance, but I also love steady. I'm just super grounded. <laughs> right now because it's all I'm rubbing on myself um but those oils calming right helping you to be grounded helping you to feel in control um mindset is a huge piece of this as well okay this is one of my favorite things to talk about so this is the one that I if you could see my computer right now you'd see I have sticky notes all around the outside so that I don't get off topic because I'm a rambler. <laughs> not, it's not rambling. It's not bad rambling. 
it's on topic rambling. It's just a lot of little rabbit trails. Um, so mindset is first of all, everything. <laughs> um, I like to start off with like thinking, okay, what voices am I hearing? What things are my believing about myself when I am building my business? What, what is, what is coming out of me? Right? So a great example, I just actually posted in our builder group, um, today and we were talking about fear, right? The thing you're afraid of is probably the thing you need to be doing <laughs> like yesterday, the thing you are terrified of. And I had to really be open with them. That, like, guys, I'm really afraid of looking stupid and people not liking me. Like I had to just flat out say it out loud. And when I said it out loud, I was like, oh, Courtney. But it's in my heart that is the lie that I was believing is that nobody's gonna like you. They're gonna think you're a liar and that you are really dumb and you're not smart enough to teach them about anything. And that was what, and then I had to like, it was like a little, it's like in the movies when they like smack them across the face, like smack, smack. I, it, that's how I imagined myself do, I imagine doing that to myself. And I was like, Courtney, that is not you, right? That is, and you can, however you believe this, you can believe it's the devil. You can believe it's the adversary, however you want to believe it, negative energy, whatever. But that is not, that was not me saying you're a loser and nobody's going to like you, right? So I had to quickly adjust and acknowledge that the lies that I was believing that, that were literally shaping my brain chemistry, right, were lies. And then that, that wasn't the truth. And that's not coming from me. And that's not coming from the people that love me and care about me. So I've been walking through this quite a bit in the last few months. And we've actually been doing a, uh, we're calling it a mindset makeover. And we did it with our builders. And then we did it with our next upline builders. Um, it's like a 30, we did 30 days of mindset makeover where every day we did cupped hands with um, high vibrational oils. We did positive affirmations. We did tapping. You guys, I'm obsessed with EFT, tap, like tapping my face, literally tapping my face. If you don't know about it, just Google it. It's really cool. And it, I'm telling you, it has changed the entire energy and vibration in my body. Like I can feel that frequency shift when I do that. Um, if you're not familiar with, um, there's the experiment where doc, I don't even know how to say his name, Dr. Emoto or whatever. <coughs> you guys, I'm probably totally butchered that name, but he did the water experiment and where he put words on water bottles. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He put words on water bottles. So he put things like smart, stupid, beautiful, and like positive and negative. And the positive words, they change the literal chemistry of the water inside the bottle just from those printed things being on top of them, right? Change the chemistry. So just thinking those negative words and those negative things over yourself to yourself sometimes it's out loud we're saying it is changing your actual chemistry it changes the very frequency of your body and i think that that's just such a pivotal piece is knowing that in that like taking care of your mind your stress your mindset we're going to talk about emotions in a second and i just think that is such a big part in this business. Um, anyway, I, that's, I could literally talk. E Emoto. Emoto, Dr. Emoto. He looked it up for me. So I were a good team. All right. I'm going to keep going. Your spirit. Are you feeding your spiritual self? Okay. This is a big part and it's a part that I tried to really ignore <laughs> recently because, okay, I'm going to be, Flat out honest, so I am a pastor's daughter. I have grown up in church, like church, church, guys. And I was like so determined that that didn't have to be a big piece. That that was a piece, but it didn't have to be such a big piece, right? 
it was a lie and it does have to be a big piece. It doesn't have to be God and it doesn't have to be going to church, just something to build up your spiritual self. Okay. And I have found that when I'm doing this daily is when it makes the biggest difference. So fun fact, praying, whoever you're praying to, but just praying in general raises your body's vibration by 15 megahertz. Okay. So also fun fact, coffee lowers it by 10 megahertz. So I always, when I'm holding my coffee in the morning, I'm like, dear Jesus, I thank you for this day. And I, and I roll rose on so that I can drink my coffee because rose has a really high frequency as well. <laughs> and so I roll on rose and I pray to Jesus and I drink my coffee and I figure it balances itself out at some point. <laughs> I mean, it is, it's working that way. Um, also, singing with others produces oxytocin. Singing in general produces oxytocin. But when you sing with other people, like in a group, or when you hug someone. So I think of, when I think of all these things, I think of, oh my gosh, this is the stuff that I was thinking I didn't need. And here I am like building up my spiritual self by singing in church or singing to music or praying when I drink my coffee so that it balances out my, <laughs> my vibration. <laughs> anyway, I just think this is such a huge pivotal piece that um, so many of us, maybe you're like me and you're like, no, don't need it. Don't need it at all. Um, or maybe, you know, you need it and you're just not doing it enough, but this has been a really big piece. You know, when we, um, committed to this being a piece of our business and our spirituality being part of it. I mean, so I'll, in total transparency, the day that we decided that like three weeks later, we hit gold and three months, three months after that, August, four months after that, we hit platinum. It was just like, boom, 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 because we got all the right things in alignment and we got all the self care in place. Right. So it's important. It's an important part. Okay. Oh, oh, this is, this is the frequency stuff. I forgot I put it on here. So that's that. So you can see where the healthy body functions right there in the center and all the disease and all the yucky stuff is on the left. And that's where you're focusing on negativity and drinking coffee and smoking. <laughs> and then on the right is where we get into those higher numbers, right? Um, focusing on positivity, meditating, giving and receiving prayer, using your high frequency oils, resting, eating well, positive mantras and affirmations. This is all a part of taking care of the body that we were given, right? Our bodies literally vibrate at frequencies. So knowing that and knowing what we can do to increase that and care for ourselves so that we're not vulnerable to disease, right? All right. Okay. And then emotions. I could talk for hours about this part, but I'm choosing to stay on topic. <laughs> um, I have done a lot of emotional work <laughs> in the last six months. Are you feeling drained by others? Okay, if you guys saw Natalie Rigby's post last week, she talked about this. And it was the very day that I was feeling exactly what she said. When, you know, we're in a business, majority of us are women. The majority of us are ladies out there running our own awesome boss lady businesses. But also, sometimes we don't act like boss ladies. Sometimes we get crabby and negative and are like, I can't do it and all the things. And then the people above us who are trying to like pull us up and uplift us are just exhausted. <laughs> and I have learned, so I am not a super, we laugh about this. I'm not a super empathetic person. Okay. Probably just the fact that I've got a bunch of kids and I'm just like, you're not bleeding. It's fine. Um, but in general in life, like I'm not overly empathetic. However, we are learning that I am an empath. And I feel everything. I have also found that a lot of doTERRA people are also empaths. It's the nature of this business, right? We're around people and we love people and we feel people's stuff. And that can get 
exhausting. So what I want to show you guys is what I've been doing is, have you guys seen this? Have you guys seen, okay, it's I Am Worthy by Desiree Mangandog, and this is only on her website, um, DesireeMangandog.com, right now, because it's just out, unless it's somewhere that I haven't seen yet. Um, but this is a really awesome book, okay? So it's hot, it walks you through, oh, how many weeks? I think it's six weeks, I'm verifying, yes, yeah, six weeks of self-acceptance. But what I am learning is that it's about more than just like, oh, I'm so wonderful and I deserve all the things. It's very much um, peeling away layer by layer, <laughs> which is sometimes painful. <laughs> I am on week two right now, which is a renewing week. Week one, week one was called Clear the Noise. And I'm going to read something to you guys real fast. Because I think that a lot of you will um, resonate with this, like I did. So what she says, here we go. Um, our environment deeply affects our worldview, moods, and behaviors. When we surround ourselves with family members, friends, coworkers, acquaintances who operate under a paradigm of scarcity, which as you guys probably know, a lot of people come into doTERRA with that mindset, right? They come in it's a growth thing. We all grow through doing this as a business. Over time, we may adopt those same frequencies. People with a filthy arc field tend to lack self-confidence and are easily influenced by the opinions of others. They also lack clarity, which is a key component to affecting others in a positive way. A noisy field breeds confusion, mood swings, depression, fear, anxiousness, and irritability. But as you learn to clear the noise and build healthy boundaries, your environment will have less of an impact on you and your clean and strong arc field will have more of an influence on others. And she goes on to talk about more hypersensitive, more em empath type personalities. Um, and basically it's a, she has you do a roller blend every day with melaleuca, wintergreen, cypress, lemongrass, and cedarwood to clear clear all the crap that you've absorbed from other people. So this has been really cool for me. I'm only, like I said, two weeks in, but what I was finding was that I was so drained, not by my business. I wasn't drained by the work I'm doing. I was drained by all the other stuff that I was letting get attached to me. Um, stuff from other people. It's not my stuff, <laughs> but I was holding on to it for them. <laughs> I don't need anybody else's baggage. I have my own. I just, it, you know, you don't even realize sometimes that like somebody else's stuff has somehow become your stuff and then you're carrying around everybody's and that's not, that's not necessary. It's not needed. Um, so that was the first thing that, but, okay. yeah, but it's important because this is such a, um, relational yes. business. Yes. It's important that you recognize that. And don't shut yourself off from right. It. So this is about handling this aspect of the business because that's part of it. Yeah. Hearing yeah. and listening and, and feeling with people yes. is all part of the business. And and you can't like for me, I just would be like, well, deal with it on your own. But <laughs> <laughs> but but I've had to come around and I don't, she deals with more than I do, but this is about, it's about all dealing. Those, all those ladies we deal with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning and growing a lot, yeah. but this is about how to handle that absorption because it's going yeah. to happen. Yeah, because it you is. You can't ignore it. It is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be something you're going to be put into. And so knowing, hey, I have these really awesome oils that help break up negative patterns and negative energy and help me release those things, right? Um... You know, we have these really amazing emotional oils. And I think that sometimes we reach for them um, in a reactive way when we could be reaching for them proactively as well. So when we're going into a situation that's overwhelming, you know, I'll be really honest. I, again, our house is a little overwhelming because there's so many of us in it. And there's so many people and all of their stuff at my house. <laughs> physical and emotional stuff, I'll, I'll add. Um, but 
I know that before I come home that I might need to roll on some cheer or some peace before I walk into that situation of overwhelm, of anxiousness, of stress, right? I know that I might need to um, pull out the forgive before I go talk to the child who needs some chatting with, <laughs> you know? I need to use them on myself proactively so that I am not suddenly down that rabbit hole with that child <laughs> or so that I am not suddenly in the midst of dinner time chaos with kids and homework and somebody's got to go to gymnastics and then they have a practice and all these things. If I'm putting on my oils ahead of time, I think the self-care comes in knowing that you're going to need it, right? It's going to happen. We're going to need some oils, guys. <laughs> and don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till you're in the throes. Of course we can use them when we're in the middle of it as well. But it's, it goes hand in hand, the reactive and the proactive. We've got to have a little of both. And I think that's really what self-care is all about. It's about being proactive in taking care of yourself so you can pour out onto others. Um, I threw down the little line down there. Are you always frustrated? Been frustrated by your team or by your family members because I love the concept of like don't worry about what anybody else is doing don't worry about what the, you think they should be doing or what you think that um, your builders in particular I, I mean we're all in here doing this as a business and we're working with other people who we are dependent on but also it's their business and it's kind of a weird situation, isn't it? Like it's such a strange, I need you, but also you need, you need to do you. And, and then you're like trying to figure out that dance of, and I loved when Gina Truman talked about this at convention, actually, when she was talking about, don't like, don't worry about what your builders are doing. Be the builder that they want to copy and do the things that you are doing. Like, worry about what you need to do and don't spend all that time go find yourself you know go after your contacts go after after your prospects and do your personal development and let don't get worked up and all that so anyway that was um that was i think mostly what i wanted to share with you guys um one oh i didn't stop during see here we are all right, um, let me make sure I didn't miss, oh my gosh, all the comments, mostly Karina, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, we've had a few. People wanted to know the blend. I think we finally figured it out, but you mentioned the blend to block people's stuff. Uh, so I, was in, um, I was in Keynote, and it doesn't show me the, do you want me to read you the drops? Did you find it? Yeah. No, we you share it? Okay. Just make sure we got it right. Okay, it is eight drops of Melaleuca, three drops of wintergreen, three drops of cypress, three lemongrass, and three cedar wood. So pretty, um, actually delicious smell. I, fun, and I think as you, most of you probably know, like when you start to like, grow in an area all of a sudden the oils that you're using for that smell so good to you right when I first smelled it it stunk <laughs> I was like this is dumb why am I rolling this on all these times a day and I got about five days in I was like oh what's that what's that smell it's so lovely and it was me and it was my oil I just like I wasn't expecting to like Melaleuca yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like the best smell to me. Because normally I'm like, eh, Melaleuca. Eh. But it smells right. so good to me now because it's done some sort of like healing. It's, I'm attached to it now. <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, that's the blend from I Am Worthy. Yeah, it's the Clear the Noise blend. Okay, really cool thing about this book, though, guys. In the back, so the old book she had was I Am Fabulous, and it's great but you had to buy the um, sheets of labels separately. In the new book, it's in the back. Oh, Isn't that cool? cool? Yeah, so yeah. like I have everything I need to make the blends that she has me making each week, just right there. So it's four blends, but you already have all your labels, which is kind of nice. It's not a second purchase you have to make. 
Awesome. Yep. Yep. That was so good. I, you know what? I'm feeling better about myself, you know, as a mom. <laughs> but here's my one question, okay? Let me be just okay. straight up with you. Yes. You have seven children? Yes. And you're both sitting at the computer. And Amanda and Mike can do this too. Like, yeah. tell me where your children are. In bed. Mm, I don't buy it. You know, my kids go to bed 30 times a night. You okay. know what I mean? <laughs> Here's what's going to happen. Well, okay, I'm not going to manifest that this is going to happen, but last night, here's what happened. Okay. Let's hear it. Last night, I want to, last night, our two and a half year old had some sort of alarm clock that went off in her brain at 10 o'clock and at 10 30 and at 11 and at 11 30 and then we just brought her to bed with us because we wanted to sleep so there's that our older two put themselves to bed while we were on this call though wow that's like can i just tell you i'm learning something about this little stage in life that we're at because our little ones are still little ones, but I have, we have, what, 12? They go to bed pretty good on their own. They're pretty I mean, great now. We put it, them to bed, but they stay in bed. Those ones stay in bed. Other than the younger two, everybody else stays in bed. But our older two, now that they're 12 and 13, they, like, put themselves to bed, which is oh. nuts to me. <laughs> it's nuts. They also, Kenzie, you're going to love this. Our older two babysat our other five a uh, oh. week ago during parent teacher conferences that was like that was pretty cool that's huge that's like we have entered a new stage and yeah. i'm just so went happy well. it, went it went well, well. we like, came home and they were all coloring together on the floor no one was killing each other we can go on a date like, we could like go within like a <laughs> yeah. 10 mile radius and i would feel pretty good about myself <laughs> awesome yeah that's i i you guys are amazing i aspire to be like you and tomorrow I will be talking to Jesus when I drink my coffee. I love that. I feel like it was a really good revelation. <laughs> yes, that's good to know. Somebody did ask, will you share that slide? I mean, what? That slide that you um, posted with the frequencies? Is that yeah, what you called it? I can it? put it in the comments once this is posted. Yeah, to okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah I Does also anybody have, have any questions? Yeah. Q&A. About anything. I have a feeling these two can answer it all. I'll talk about anything. <laughs> I've got to say, both Courtney and Michael, you look amazing <laughs> for everything <laughs> you have done. <laughs> so, Iris, we take these young. supplements and like use the skincare <laughs> line from this company called doTERRA. Oh, really? <laughs> I do too, and I'm a lot older. <laughs> but, uh, well, I was going to say, there is that too. I mean, we started having those seven kids when we were like 20. So, I was wow. 19 when we had our first. So, mm -hmm. we're only 32 I, and 33. We've, yeah. had, we've only had one kid born in our 30s. And let me just say, if we had waited till we were 30, we probably would only have one kid. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of difference. Yes. I mean. This is wow. a lot of different. You know, in your 20s, you can go for with only four hours of sleep. And it's, it's no not a problem. big deal. When you're 31, 32, it's like. Yes. It's like, I need, I need more. <laughs> we thought we were dying is what happened. We thought we were dying. <laughs> I had my two daughters at. Uh, 31 and 34, I think, because it was after I had my incident and uh, we had decided we're going to do this anyway. And so it changes when you are in your 30s. It really does. Yeah. So I'm, I applaud you and thank you for everything you talked about and i'm the one that wanted the human frequency chart so yeah, i'll post that and i also have a chart that has like the top oils and their frequencies um or the highest frequencies out of the oils i wish there was a way um to like i've kind of done a little research on how to figure out like what i what technology do i need to figure out frequencies because that is fascinating to me because like i can tell when something raises my frequency at this point like I can tell like Litzia does mm -hmm. something to me mm -hmm. and Magnolia does something. Mm -hmm. and 
but I would love to like know where those fall on the chart. Like, you know, cause everything that's, is kind of just basic oils that we, right. That I, that I have access to online. I do know of some authors that may help. So let me look into that. Yeah, there was a whole thread on it in the um, golden platinum doTERRA group. And we were all kind of trying to figure out, okay, how do we actually figure this out? Cause it would be great when a new oil comes out to know where it falls on mm -hmm. that line. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Tracy, what does frequency mean? Um, so our bodies vibrate at an electromagnetic frequency. So do all objects in nature, right? So like, oceans and real food and water animals. oh i said oceans animals plants like we all have an electromagnetic frequency so because oils are from nature they also have an electromagnetic frequency and so that chart that i showed kind of shows where when we hit a certain frequency this is when we're more vulnerable to disease or this is when we're at our optimal wellness place so adding oils can either it can raise that oils always raise it no matter what oil, like lemon raises your frequency, not as much as rose, but it does. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Once you start like thinking about it before you grab an oil, you know, it's, I don't know. It's just been really, at least emotionally, that's been kind of a game changer for me. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to turn off the recording really quick.